Hey, I am David for Big Bits, and in this video, we're going to take a look at several of the newest updates from TradingView, including a huge uh, new product, I guess you would call it, the TradingView desktop application for both Windows and uh, Apple operating systems. So, first of all, we are looking at the script that we made in the last video, the indicator where we talked about the rising and falling functions. If you missed that video, go to my profile and check that out here on YouTube. But today, we're going to be looking at this particular chart on uh, both the website here and on the desktop application. So we'll take a look at what we've done in the past, but we'll be comparing it between the desktop and the web application. So uh, going ahead and getting into things, they do have a blog post. If you have went and seen this, this came out several days ago, about a week ago now. I uh, wanted to actually take some time and look at the web or the desktop application, excuse me, before we got into doing a video about it. So I kind of know what's going on. It's pretty interesting. You can see the version that they're showing you here is the uh, Apple version. Of course, you can see the Mac OS there. But one of the cool things about this it has native multi-monitor support. And I'll show you kind of what they mean by this. But um, it, yeah, I'll, I'll just show you in a minute. It'll make more sense than the desktop experience. Uh, basically, the most important thing is that it is going to be more efficient and uh, a little bit faster than using a web browser specifically if you're using a web browser that has a hard time with memory and things like that this application is going to dedicate its browser which is i assume how it's working uh specifically for trading view everything's going to be optimized for the trading view experience and i'll show you kind of what we mean by that here in just a moment but let me go ahead and drag this over from my other monitor you can see this is the application. Uh, once you've got it installed, it opens like any other application on your computer. On Windows here, I just hit the start key, type in trading view, and it'll bring up the link for the application. And I just click on it and the application comes up. Once you get signed in, you can see I have signed in with my account here. And it doesn't give you a whole lot of options here on the actual menu for the uh, application itself. Pretty much everything is kind of baked in to the application itself uh, as far as the web application. And you can see this is essentially just the web application. Everything is exactly like the web application, even the notifications, everything looks exactly like it. So based on my experience building desktop applications, I believe they are just loading in the actual web application here. And authenticating you from where you logged into the application using some sort of token. So the login that you're doing basically logs you into the application locally, but is also giving you the token to be logged in to their website as well within this application. And of course, it'll be saved in your browser, similar to how it is when you log in on Chrome or something like that. It'll remember who you are. Same thing will kind of happen here. It'll just save that token so it'll remember who you are. Now, of course, everything here is just like uh, the actual website. There's really not a whole lot to go over. There was one minor difference, though, and that is if we go on to, say, something like the profile here, go down to the very bottom, you can see there's links that take us to outside of TradingView. And let me find one of them here. Um, say if we were to click on YouTube, it's going to open up a new browser window on my actual browser here in the background not going to open up YouTube here within their application. And that is done by design on their end so that you don't open up other applications within their application, even though it is using a browser. Now you can click on all the different things within TradingView here. That's completely fine. That's kind of to be expected, correct? So one of the other things that I wanted to mention and show you, aside from, you know, this is going to be operating a little bit better and using less memory, is that it said that it had native multi-monitor support. And the cool thing about this is even though it's a desktop application and you can see that, you know, you've got tabs for your browser, you can actually pull out that tab. It didn't look like you could uh, because it had the circle with the line through it and it kind of looked like you shouldn't be able to do it, but you can. I was able to pull out that tab. You can actually slide this over onto another monitor like I just did or uh, arrange them however you like. So that's something pretty cool as well. As I mentioned, it looks and operates a lot like a Chrome-based browser would. It might, in fact, be a Chrome-based browser 
in the background within their application. So that's something to take note of. Also, uh, when you're on the other pages, I've noticed I think the right click doesn't work. Uh, and that's probably also for a very good reason. So let's go back to the profile. Say I want to right click and see the actual URL here behind this link. Uh, I, I right clicked it and nothing's actually happening. So one thing you could have done is inspect source if you were using an actual browser here. But again, even if this is a browser within their application, they have a lot of control over it and what it can actually do and disabling a right click and inspecting source code is an option for them. It's the way a lot of applications do work. Uh, not all of them actually use a browser, I should say, but everything's kind of centralized on the back end somewhere and the application kind of helps you lock everything down the way you want it to be. Now, that's going to be it pretty much for the desktop version of the application. For now, I'm completely fine using the web-based version. I don't sit here and stare at charts. Uh, I used to do it quite a bit, but I don't really stare at the charts much anymore. So it's not going to do a whole lot for me because I don't check them constantly. But if you're going to be having a bunch of tabs or a bunch of charts open at once, it's probably going to be a good idea to use the desktop application as it's probably going to save you uh, some computer resources and help your entire system run a little bit smoother as opposed to opening up a bunch of different tabs on your um, Chrome or whatever other browser that you have. So I'm going to move this out of the way and we're going to take a look at some of the other items that they had for updates. And hopefully that little bit was uh, useful for you. And also if you want to download it, check out that blog post and you can find the download for Windows 10 and for Mac OS. Now, they have also launched a new feature on their application, their web application here, that is for timelines. And what this is going to do is allow you to track the company, the company history. Their first symbol that they're working with is Tesla. Now, I'm not gonna read through all of this, but you can kind of get an idea. This is their sample that they're showing. I'll zoom in just a moment. You can actually see that this is the overview, timeline, ideas, tabs. The timeline tab, of course, is where you're going to be looking. And you're going to be able to see this new feature. And you can see all of the different items that happen among the timeline. You can see they are hovering over it in their little uh, GIF video here and showing you these thumbnails. And you can look at them to get more information about them. So that's kind of interesting. And I wanted to go ahead and take you over to the Tesla symbol. Of course, you can follow symbols on trading. You can also click to trade them now, but you can see this is their first example of the timeline. Of course, you can click on the items and then you can click learn more. It'll take you to the respective URL that you need to, but pretty cool little feature. Uh, one of the things I probably wanted to mention is I believe they are looking for people to help them with this. I forget what it is. Where was it? I thought I saw this. Ah, here we go. Naturally, there are thousands of companies to get through, and they want your help. They want to know what you think is important to include and what you find the most useful. So they're asking anyone who's interested in joining that community editing project to send a message to the main TradingView account on TradingView. So you have to use your TradingView messages to send them a message to the TradingView account and ask to help if you want to be a part of doing that pretty cool idea we'll see if it catches on it's kind of like a wikipedia type approach to uh, getting information on the timelines uh, again here that is and the last feature here is the highlighter tool which is kind of interesting this is just another drawing tool that it's going to allow you to highlight on the page and honestly it's just a brush it's uh, really nothing too spectacular here. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. You can find this over here with the drawing tools like the brush itself. But let's come down, click on the highlighter. And really the only difference between the brush and the highlighter is that by default it's transparent. See, I changed mine to where it wasn't, but the default color that it had was pretty much this color. One thing you will notice, of course, you can change the color with the settings of the highlighter. And there are some other settings, of course, you can change uh, regarding visibility. Uh, mainly, though, just the uh, color and transparency. 
Uh, the width appears to be pretty fixed here. I, I would have assumed it would have been in these particular settings for the highlighter. But one thing that you should know is if you do have them transparent, watch what happens when you go over the same line twice. You can see right here it's a little bit brighter. The transparency stacks. It doesn't stay the same between both of them. So if for whatever reason you're going over the same spot a bunch, you'll notice that the transparency kind of overlaps and it doesn't stay the same throughout. So that's kind of interesting to note, but for the most part, it's just a brush. Nothing really too fancy about it, but it is a new tool. So I figured I'd highlight it for all of you all. And I think that's it for this video. I appreciate all of you all for watching. We're almost at 4,000 subscribers. That's getting pretty wild. I appreciate everyone who stops by. Uh, and if you like this video, please go down and leave a like on the video. That helps a whole lot. And if you did like this video, you'll probably like the rest of my videos. Go check those out. But you should probably also subscribe while you're down there liking the video. Because you can get updates like this and some of the tutorial videos and other things that we cover here on the channel. But that's going to be it for now. I appreciate you watching and have a great day.